Hi there, this is Hot Pocket Remix. In the last video, I explained how to make a simple event script that automatically used every soul of a lost undead that the player acquired. And I encourage you to watch that video already if you haven't, since this video builds off it. The goal of this video is understanding parameter replacement. Let's suppose that we'd like to make our event script work for all types of non-boss soul consumables instead of just souls of a lost undead. We could create a new event for each type of soul by copy-pasting the current event and adjusting the values. In this case, it would be this 400 here, which is the soul item ID, and the effect ID here, 3270. Instead of doing that, however, we could use a parameter replacement to accomplish the same effect without duplicating the entire event. Two quick notes. First, this is really for demonstration purposes only. If I were seriously making this into an actual script that I plan to use, I would instead have a single event that handles everything at once. Otherwise, we could end up with multiple event scripts fighting over the player's animation, which would look bad. Secondly, parameter replacement doesn't save that much time, especially since we're doing it by hand. If we had an interface that could take care of the messy details for us, it would definitely be better than copy-pasting, but here it's not going to save a lot of time. Nevertheless, the reason I'm explaining this in its own separate video is for those people who are primarily interested in modifying existing events, uh, since many of them do use parameter replacement. But for our purposes, I'm going to work with the event we developed in the previous video, since we hopefully already understand it more or less completely. Parameter replacement allows us to pass certain values as arguments to the event when it is initialized, and parameter replacement instructions explain which parts of the existing event these arguments should affect. In our case, we'll pass two values to the event. The first will be the item ID, and the second will be the special effect ID associated to that item. So let's look at the first instruction in this event. We'd like to replace this 400 with some dynamic value. Our first step is to set up the parameter replacement event. And we have a caret here that signifies it's going to apply to the previous line. So you can see up here this parameter replacement event takes a certain form. And I'll explain what that means in a second. What you might be thinking is, oh, okay, well, we want to replace the third argument here with, say, the first argument in the uh, event initialization, but that's actually not how it works. Even if it were zero indexed, and if you're a programmer, you're probably thinking, oh, well, he means he means two, but that's not what I mean here. Unfortunately. These parameters are not kept as an array. They're instead kept as what C or C++ programmers are probably familiar with as a struct. So what I mean by that is the data is instead packed binary data. So there's no indication where one parameter starts or ends. So that's why this type signature here is particularly important. It tells us how much space each parameter takes up. The first one is a one byte signed int. The next one is a one byte unsigned int. This one is a four byte signed int. And again, we have a one byte unsigned int. So if you're thinking about it, you're saying, okay, one byte, two bytes, four bytes, one byte. So that means that this should start at byte 2, if we're working with uh, 0 index, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so you might be thinking, OK, we're interested in replacing bytes 2, 3, 4, and 5. However, that's not how it works. And people who know anything about structs will probably guess why. That's because structs are packed byte aligned. So you, you can look up what I mean by this if you want more details of why this is done or uh, how this is managed 
but I've drawn a silly little picture to explain it using some text art. So here's what I was thinking of as packing, not respecting byte alignment. So we have our first B, second B, then the four I's, then one B. And so again, the start of this four byte int that we were interested in is at byte two. However, what it actually looks like is this second diagram here, where it's packed respecting byte alignment. So four byte ints can only start at multiples of four, so zero, four, eight, etc. Two byte ints can only start at multiples of two, and one byte ints can still start anywhere, because everything is a multiple of one. So because of this, we actually have padding bytes between the first two actual bytes of interest, and then we have our four byte int. Now you can imagine, well, maybe our signature looks like B, B, I, B, H, a, a short, a two byte int. Where would it go? Well, it wouldn't go in nine and 10 because that would not be byte aligned. It has to start at a multiple of two. It would instead go at 10 and 11, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. So because of that, we have to keep that in mind when we're computing what the bytes that we need to replace are. It's not bytes two through five, it's actually bytes four through eight. Now the source packed data, uh, I've drawn a representation of it here, it's just going to be two ints, I've called them one and two. Uh, nothing crazy is happening here. So the first argument, which is going to be what's replacing that 400, is going to start at byte zero, it's going to be bytes zero through three. And the second argument, which is going to be the special effect ID, is going to be bytes four through seven. So nothing crazy is happening here, but it could in principle. Uh, but just for this demonstration, we'll only worry about byte alignment as it affects the destination pack data. Returning here, which bytes do we need to replace? Well. We need to replace, as we saw, bytes four through seven. So the syntax is we are going to replace bytes four with byte zero. Now the reason it's arranged in this odd order is because this is how it's actually stored internally, and I didn't want to mess around with the order too much, um, so I've just added some additional uh, syntax here to say, oh, well, byte four is coming from byte zero rather than the other way around to remind you uh, which direction is which. So rather than now saying five comes from one, six comes from two, and so on, instead we just say we want to copy four bytes. Okay, and that's a parameter replacement instruction. By convention, Replaced parameters are 0 or negative 1 or 1 or 0, 0 0.0 if you're replacing a float, these sorts of things. I don't know that this is actually important, but the packing tool that I created will complain if you try and overwrite a non standard dummy variable. So that if it's not 0 or minus 1 or something like that, you may have made a mistake. And so you want to be very clear that you're replacing this value. It'll also complain if you try and overwrite uh, across argument boundaries. If you said, ah, I'd like to overwrite bytes seven and eight, that's across two different arguments. So it will say, I think you're doing something wrong, just to be sure. The other two instructions, remember we we're trying to replace this 400 and this 3270, they're very similar. So I'm not going to talk about those in quite as much detail. I haven't prepared a little diagram for each one of them. Here, the bytes that we're going to replace, it's just three ints. And so this 400 is the second of them. And so it's actually also byte four, five, six, and seven. So in fact, the instruction is exactly the same as the previous one, purely by coincidence. Uh, this four could have been something else in principle. And again, we'll replace it with a dummy zero. 
And then finally, here, we need to replace this 3270. Again, this is actually starting at byte 4, so this will be 4. But now it comes from our second argument, which, as I showed, actually starts at byte 4. So we'll say 4 here instead. And again, we're going to copy 4 bytes. And let's replace 3270 with 0. Okay, so we've modified the event appropriately, so now it can actually accept arbitrary parameters. We need to modify the event initialization. Recall that at the very start in the constructor, we had this instruction, which told the constructor to initialize 8099. We need to modify that because now we need to submit extra arguments to it. You can see the form of that in these next couple commands. So we now don't have any zero as our dummy blank argument. Instead, we have our actual arguments. So they were 400 and 3270. And the only other thing we have to do is modify the signature. So now, instead of having this dummy unsigned int i as our argument, we instead actually have a signed int and another signed int. And I put this pipe symbol here to indicate that, well, this extra stuff is not truly part of the signature for 2000, but instead is a hint as to what these other arguments uh, are for, so that what their type is. So 3270 here is actually a signed int. Now, this information isn't actually saved in the packed file. So if you were to pack this up right now, and send it to a friend, and they use this tool to unpack it, it would return to thinking of these as unsigned ints. You can see here, it's always determining that the types of these parameters are actually unsigned ints, even though they might actually not be. And so if you're reading these events, sometimes it's important to realize that you need to check the event to figure out what the parameters type truly is, because that's actually not saved anywhere. So what we've accomplished so far is making it so that the event can now accept arbitrary parameters, and we've modified our initialization so that it accepts the original things as the parameters. What we want to do is now expand that so we submit other parameters to it. So I'm just going to take this entire line and copy it. There's actually nine other types of uh, souls. So I'm going to paste this nine times. There we go. That should be all of them. And now I want to replace the 400 and the 3271 with the appropriate values. And it actually turns out that they are sequential. Similarly for the special effect. ID. They are also sequential. So that seems like all. We've now modified each of these events so that they initialize with the correct item ID and the correct special effect ID. But the game only allows one event of each ID to run at any given time. And this is for technical reasons, so that you can actually say, has this event completed just by its event ID? If we had multiples, we couldn't do that. So instead, what we do is we use this unused thing that we didn't talk about before. I just said this is the event slot number. We'll come back to it. And we're coming back to it now. When we have multiple events of the same type, 8099 for all of them, we just give them a different value in the event slot number to tell the game, yes, I know that these are the same event, but I want them all started at the same time. They really are different events. They're just taking in parameters. So events that don't have parameters, you can't start more than one of them because it would just be multiple copies of the exact same event. So it's always zero. But you can see for some of these other events that have parameters that we have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. OK, so. That's actually it. That's all we needed to do, and now it will work for any non-boss soul consumable, all the way up to soul of a great hero.
So I could go through the process of packing this up and, and showing you how to write out common.emev. I'm not actually going to do that. We did that last video. Nothing has changed. But I will show you through the magic of television that I've actually prepared what the verbose version looks like. And you can see that it says, OK, I'm going to initialize all of these events. They have a different slot number. Here's what their arguments look like. Nothing too surprising here. If we look at the event at the end, now things do look slightly different. All those parameter replacement instructions have actually vanished because the verbose version actually attempts to take them into account. And so you can see item ID has now been replaced by a parameter name, x03. This is a clue that it's actually byte 0 through 3. And similarly, the same name is down here. And special effect ID is now x4 through 7. And it says there's two parameters, x0 through 3 and x4 through 7. Those are their two names. And from context, it has picked up on the fact that they're actually both signed in. It doesn't use the uh, instruction at the very top, the event initialization instruction. Instead, it actually figures that out based on what parameters are being substituted. So this argument was a uh, signed int, and so it guesses, aha, x03 must be a signed int. Because remember, this information can be gleaned from context, but generally the types of these parameters don't actually show up anywhere. They're always assumed to be unsigned int, so we can't actually figure out what they were. The only way we figure this out, this information, you can see in other uh, events we're figuring out similar information is by guessing from context how these things are used. Okay, so that's basically all we need to do in terms of parameter replacement. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the pack data, put it in the game, and start it up. So I'll see you in a second and we'll test it out for different soul items. Okay, so here we are in game. Again, I've just made a new character and ran through to Firelink Shrine. And I'm just going to find a Soul of a Lost Undead and use it again. And we'll see that the same thing occurs. And so we can see that exactly the same thing happens here. So I happen to know that there's a soul of a nameless soldier or something like that down in New Londo Ruins. So let's run over there really fast, take the elevator down, and we'll take a look at that as well. Now, I'm not going to go through the game trying to find one of every soul item just to show you that it works, but it really does. And so this is how we can use parameter replacement to set it up to make sure that the entire event works but for different slightly different at least sets of parameters <laughs> 